Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for being with me today as I go over information about Operation Child Protector 4. But before I do that, I first and foremost want to extend my, my heartfelt words for the state of Israel and all of the people there that are the victims of the Hamas terrorist. I've heard them referred to other things. They are murdering terrorists, and that's exactly what they are. So for those in the media, if someone suggests to you that they're just militants, that is absolutely false. They're murdering, torturing terrorists. And the people of Israel and all of the victims have been in my prayers from the very beginning and will continue to be in my prayers, quite frankly. I'm sorry that I can't be there shoulder to shoulder fighting the terrorist with them, but I can assure you that we're going to do everything possible in our homeland to protect the Jewish people from any attacks and any other people from any attacks. That is absolutely unacceptable. And I don't have words strong enough for my anger toward this terrorist attack upon the people of Israel. So with that, on September the 19th to the 25th for seven days, we did two operations at the same time. One was a human trafficking operation that resulted in 219 arrests, and you covered that in the media. The other that was the sexual predator operation that resulted in six arrests. These six people here. I want you to get a good look at these folks because these are people that thought they were going to come have sex with children. They came to a strange undercover location thinking that they were going to encounter a 13 or a 14 or a 15 year old child. They're dangerous. If it weren't for the outstanding work of the men and women of law enforcement, they absolutely would have attacked children had it not been an undercover operation. We were joined by our colleagues because no one agency can do this by themselves as successfully as we can working together. The Orange County Sheriff's Office, the Lakeland Police Department, the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office, the Tampa Police Department, and the Lake County Sheriff's Office joined us in this operation. And as a result, we took some very, very bad people off the street. So I want to introduce you to them. I want you to see what a pedophile looks like. I want you to see what someone looks like and some of the words that they say whenever they're caught thinking they're going to have sex with children. The first one is Douglas Cooley. He's 26. He's from Apopka. He's employed by the Discover Aftercare. You see, this is a program that is on the Orange County School District's property. To be specific, the Clay Springs Elementary School, where aftercare is provided to children. He worked in that program with children, and now he shows up at an undercover operation to have sex with a very young teenage girl. He thought he was going to meet this 15-year-old as a result of a bad stepmom operation. That's right. He was going to pay stepmom to have sex with a 15-year-old. I'd like to underscore that this program that he worked for is a contractor or a vendor, not the school employees, but a contracted service to the Orange County school system. So he thought he was going to meet this 15-year-old little girl and have sex because the bad stepmom arranged it. He was going to pay for it. He said that, I'm interested. But is she the only girl you have? Did you, hear, did you hear what I said? 
did you hear what I said? He wanted to know if this was the only girl that they had. And then our suspect, Douglas, asked the stepmom, uh, are you her pimp? The child's 15 years of age. He traveled to this location. He was also charged with human trafficking as well. Oh, he was wearing a D.A.R.E. t-shirt. For those of you who are not familiar, D.A.R.E. is a program that's taught to teach children how to be safe and to resist drugs. He was wearing that t-shirt. He's currently in our jail. He said, my life's over. Kinda. We plan to send you to prison for a very, very long time. What you did was a serious felony, but because of the work of our detectives, and I brag on them because they're simply the very best, that night it wasn't a real child that he was able to groom and convince that it's all right to come over, or it wasn't a real stepmom that was offering up her stepdaughter for sex. He didn't know that, but he does now. And then there's Juro Munez, he's from Kissimmee, he's 40. He was a laborer for Brand Safeway Scaffolding. They fired him. They were not amused. He's married, that's right. He thought he was meeting a 13-year-old child, a little girl for sex. He said he wanted to teach her how to have sex but he used much more graphic terms than that. Now, if I told you that, you'd just bleep it out and wouldn't tell everyone. Some of y'all may even cover up some of these faces. You know, shame on you if you do. But if, when asked, well, what would you do if a man was wanting to do this to your daughters? And we asked that question because we discovered during the interview with him, he had four daughters between 9 and 16 years of age. What would you do if a grown man, 40 years of age, wanted to come have sex with your daughters like you wanted to have sex with this 13-year-old? He said, well, if they tried this with my daughters, he said, I would hang them. Well, that's against law. We can't do that but we can prosecute you and send you to prison for a very long time. But while he would take the ultimate violent act against someone wanting to hurt his daughter, he was doing the same thing to someone else's daughter. By the way, his daughters are being screened as well. He's posted bond, and I find it interesting that he's posted bond, he's out. He's out until court day, but he traveled, and he's also charged with attempted lewd battery. Now, I want to take this a step further. Keep in mind what he said he would do if they did it to his daughters. So why he is grooming what he thinks is a 13-year-old, he sends photos of his little man. Did you hear that? He's a little man, and he, he's a little man didn't have any clothes on. It was nasty. It was a nasty little man. But yet, it's okay for him to do that to somebody else's child. Once again, he's in, locked up. He confessed. He's lost his job, and we intend to do our best to send him to prison. And then there's Trevor Walker. He is a maintenance guy, maintenance tech at a Publix warehouse over in Orange County, Orlando area. He wanted to have unprotected sex for three hours with a 15-year-old girl. He went for this bad stepmom deal. He was going to pay her $400 stepmom so he could have sex. 
Now, our undercovers talked to this guy for three days before he showed up. And you might ask why. Some have to build their nerve up. Most enjoy the pursuit and the grooming as much as they do the sexual encounter. That's what we find a lot with pedophiles. It's the pursuit of their quest as much as it is the sex. He even went so far as to say, well, what would it cost me if I spent all night with a 15-year-old girl? All right. Here's his moment to not travel, okay? He's already in trouble for what he said on the computer, but here's his moment. He said, now listen, I don't want to get caught up in any of this Grady Judge Sting business, and I don't want to see Chris Hansen. He got to see both. The Grady Judge Sting and Chris Hansen was there. So he's not only on local television, he's going to be on a program about how he's a pedophile and he's dangerous. And after we caught him and he figured out it was a Grady Judd sting and Chris Hansen was there to talk to him, he said, well, I made the decision to come here. I'm just stupid. What do you think? Stupid is being nice. You're an absolute moron. He also added that he wanted to have rough sex with this 15-year-old child. He's in jail. There are no 15-year-old children in jail. And this is just a nasty, dangerous person. That's right. Then there's Douglas De Silva of Windermere. Newsflash, I know it's hard for you to believe, but he's illegal from Brazil. He's an Uber driver, and he also cleans houses. I didn't think you could be an Uber driver if you were illegal. You can't take an Uber directly from Brazil here, so they had to hire him after he got here. He's married. He traveled to have sex with what he thought was a 15-year-old female, and he was going to pay $220 for that experience. Once again, he talked to the stepmom. He wanted to have different kinds of sex. Now, we can't go into the details for obvious reasons, but he said, hey, I'll up it from $220, stepmom, to $250 an extra $30 if I can have unprotected sex with this 15-year-old child. He's also charged with human trafficking. He confessed. He's been here four years, and he's waiting on his green card. Well, just thinking out loud, I believe even this administration won't give you your green card since you're now on a federal ice hole. But We'll have to wait and see. He's in jail. We want him to go to prison. And then last but not least, whoop, no, we have two more actually, but I'll tell you about our veteran. He's an Army veteran. He's currently a student. He was a mechanic in the Army, and he's got his VA benefits, and he was learning to be a Harley-Davidson motorcycle mechanic. You know, it's been my experience that Harley riders are real men. They're not pedophiles. They're not sex predators. And they don't want anybody that's a pedophile or a sex predator working on their Harley. But he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old. And he made the statement. Okay, are you ready for this? He made the statement. I don't know who made him a great historian. If this were 200 years ago, our age difference wouldn't make any difference at all. Well, it's 200 years later, and it makes a lot of difference to us. He confessed. He's currently in jail. But here's the thing that amazed me. He just moved to Davenport from Kentucky. 
I got to welcome him to Polk County when we arrested him. And on the way, while he was traveling to have sex with a child, he called his five-year-old girl and his six-year-old boy up in Kentucky to wish him good night. So he's wishing them good night while he's on his way to have sex with a child. Look, folks, these folks all have a hitch in their giddy-up. They're, they're not good people. Now, here's our last one. Ferris Cleesey. He's married. He has adult children. He's an Uber driver. He's on public assistance, and he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old female. Now, he said, he told us he was on public assistance. That's how we know. So did you take some of that government money that we all paid taxes with to have sex with a female, put gas in the car, or was that extra money? He's Syrian-born, he's naturalized, and he is legally in this country. And at the end of the day, he made this prolific statement. Trust is like a glass. Once broken, it will never be the same again. What's that about? Well, he can trust us that he's locked up in jail, and we won't break his glass because he can trust that we're always going to arrest when he does something like this. Now, he has a $26,000 bond, but he's out. So if he, didn't use the 20, if he didn't use the public assistance money that he said he got that night to get there to have sex with a child, did he use some of that public assistance money to bond out of jail? We don't know. But I find it interesting. He needs to be on public assistance but he has money to bond out of jail for being a child predator. We will continue these operations. We're going to protect the children, not only of Polk County, of Florida, but around the country and around the world from these kind of deviant actors. That night, they would have all attacked children had it not been an undercover operation and it had been a real child that they managed to groom online. Are there any questions? Um, I just have a question about the human trafficking charges that half of them are facing. Yes. What, what did they do that led to the human trafficking charges? The ones that didn't get a human trafficking charge talked directly to the child, groomed the child. The others offered to pay the stepmom to have sex. So that way, they were engaged in the human trafficking aspect. Okay. Anything else? I have a question, Sheriff. It's about the, um, the apps and the social media sites that uh, you used. Uh, were those popular um, <coughs> like, uh, everyday apps that people use? To um, Certainly. We, we don't tell what sites we go on. but. Unlike child pornography where people can go to the dark web and make it really difficult for us to figure out who the child pornographers are, to get to children, you've got to surface into gaming apps, social media apps, and that's where we find them. Sometimes it's gaming apps. So you've got to be careful, even if you're letting your child on a gaming app online that they're not being groomed. And if someone that you're playing or the child's playing a game with online wants to all of a sudden talk to them offline from the game, that's a clue. And anytime parents allow children to use social media at all, they've got to monitor it nonstop. Because these folks are out here lurking around on these social media apps of different kinds to find your child, to groom your child, to have sex with your child. Was the Chris Hansen production crew a part of this operation? The Chris Hansen production crew was embedded in this operation. And certainly we offer that opportunity for all of you. Many of you have done this in the past and you're welcome at any of our operations. 
series? No, not not in the to catch a predator series. When they were doing the to catch a predator series, the the processes and systems that they were using with other law enforcement agencies was not one that we would use in our operation. And the way it works with whether you, we embed you or Chris Hansen and the and his now to catch a predator series, whatever he calls it now is that he has no interaction with the suspects until after the criminal investigation is complete and they're waiting on transport to the jail. Then we allow him to talk to them. And we'd allow you to do the same thing. Okay? Anything else? Y'all be safe. Take care. We'll see you next time.